In this example, we're going to create a confidence interval for the average selling price of homes in a particular neighborhood. What we know is that we took a sample of 50 homes in the area, and the average selling price was 234000 We're going to assume that we know the population standard deviation, sigma, and that is 22,500. And we'll also assume that the population is normally distributed. The first part of the question asks us to find a 95% confidence interval for the population mean mu, which is the mean selling price for all the homes in the area, not just the 50 that we sampled. Our confidence interval, the generic formula, is that the population mean will fall in an interval that is the sample mean plus or minus some margin of error. So the factors that we need to know in order to make this interval are we need to know the sample mean, which is given to us in the problem, $234,000. And we need to know all of the factors to compute the margin of error, which is based on the z-critical value, the population standard deviation, which is 22,500, and also the sample size that we took, which we know is 50. So the one missing piece is we need to know the z-critical value for this confidence interval. That z-critical value is based on the confidence level that we want to use, which in this case is 95%. So with a confidence level of 95%, I can look up on my normal table what the critical value is for that confidence level. On my normal table, in the bottom left-hand corner, I have given critical values for different confidence levels. So here for 95%, we know that the Z critical value is 1.96. Or in other words, the area between plus or minus Z is 1.96 is 0.95. With that information in hand, it really just becomes a calculation. I calculate the margin of error to be $6,237. So the interval I create is an interval that is the sample mean $234,000 plus or minus that $6,237 margin of error. This gives me my final interval right here. What this interval is telling me is that while I got a sample mean of $234,000 for the average selling price of homes, I'm 95% confident that the average selling price of the homes in all of the neighborhood is somewhere on this range. Part B of this question asked us to create a 99% confidence interval. So given all the same factors, the same sample mean, the same standard deviation, the same sample size. The only thing that changes here is the confidence level and therefore what our z-critical value is. Looking up on my normal table for a confidence level of 99%, I get a z-critical value of 2.58. So now I can do the same similar calculation for the margin of error, this time using 2.58 as my z-critical value which this time gives me a margin of error of $8,210. I take that margin of error and I add it and subtract it from the sample mean to create my confidence interval in this case. I am 99% confident that the average selling price of the homes in the entire neighborhood is somewhere on this range given here. What I want to look at is the difference between these two results. You'll see here in part B, the range that we created is actually larger than the range that we created in part A. What is the difference between these two ranges? Well, the only difference it was the confidence level that we wanted. And it makes sense in part B that we have a confidence interval that has a wider range because I want to be more sure about my answer. I want to create a range in which I'm 99% sure the population mean is going to fall on. 
so all other factors remaining the same, my range is going to be have to be a little bit bigger. If we take a look at the formula for the margin of error, it's based on three factors. It's based on the z critical value, the standard deviation, and the sample size. Let's take a look at each one of these individually. The z critical value is based off of my confidence level, which is kind of like the area in the middle of the standard normal curve. So as my confidence level increases, that area on the standard normal curve needs to get bigger and bigger in the middle, thereby pushing our z critical values further towards the edges and making them larger. So a larger confidence level is going to result in a larger critical value, which will also result in a larger margin of error. So as my confidence level goes up, my margin of error is going to go up, my range is going to get bigger. Likewise for my standard deviation. Standard deviation is a measure of variability. It's sort of a measure of uncertainty. If I have a larger standard deviation, it means that the data is more spread out. There's more variability in my data. Well, if I had a lot of variability in my data, that would be a lot of uncertainty. So the larger my standard deviation is, the larger my margin of error is going to be. Because I'm less sure about my data, it's more spread out, it's more variable. So I'm going to have to create a larger interval to counteract that. So as my standard deviation of my data goes up, the margin of error, and therefore the range of my confidence interval, is going to get bigger. Lastly, thinking about the sample size, the sample size has an inverse relationship to the margin of error. If you think about it, the larger the sample I take, the larger the n is, the more sure I would probably be about my sample mean. As n increases, as my sample size gets larger and larger, it's more likely that the sample mean I calculated is going to be closer and closer to the actual population mean. So it would make sense to think that if I have a larger sample size, I would, wouldn't need as big of a range on my confidence interval. So my margin of error would actually go down. So as my sample size goes up, the margin of error of my calculation is going to go down.